Remember the Calgary Boomers? You know I always have to ask the question in my Remember the Calgary series. Well, here we are up to episode number 10 as I continue on looking at Calgary sports teams from the past. And when I was mapping out my episodes, I was coming upon that we had some soccer teams from the past that Calgary had. And the first Calgary major team that Calgary had for soccer, or you can also call it Association Football or Football, to get that European spin on it, was the Calgary Boomers. And definitely you could say there's two versions of the Calgary Boomers as they actually had a team that played indoors at the Stampede Corral. Yeah, there was some soccer in the Stampede Corral. And there was a team that also played outside, like most soccer is, at McMahon Stadium. So let's take a look back on the Calgary Boomers. And, and as I've been going through my Remember the Calgary series, keep coming upon these fun while it lasted sites where I find some relics from the past that as we're sharing in this video. Before I dive my notes, if you want to follow along with this Calgary Sports Fans journey, home of the Flames, Hitman, Roughnecks, and Stamp Peters, and in this case, formerly home of the Boomers, you know what you need to do. Just make sure you hit like, subscribe, but also my other social media links down in the description below for other ways you can follow me. And as a Calgary Sports Fan, I felt this was a nice project to look back on Calgary Sports teams in the past. And I also heard of the Calgary Boomers is one of my inspirations to uh, do this video series. We'll see a dead clothing, and I know they, they sell some merchandise of Calgary sports teams from the past, including, I did see at one time they had some Calgary Boomers merchandise with the Calgary Boomers logo, which uh, definitely has a nice touch where you see some Maple Leafs in there, showing that we're proudly Canadian. So, uh, I say, I don't remember the Calgary Boomers personally because it was just before my time as the Calgary Boomers were in Calgary in 1980 and 1981. I was born in 1982, so it just predated me, but I definitely I'm aware of its history from my research. So the Calgary Boomers were part of the North American Soccer League, the NASL. And as I said, they played an indoor game and an outdoor game. They first were the indoor team that played in the 1980-81 season over you know, the fall and winter at the Stampede Corral. And then they played outdoors in 1981 at McMahon Stadium. And that's the only season that the Calgary Boomers were around for as they only lasted one season. As they don't have... Too much to find. I have found some sites on obviously relics. And where you can find rosters, and interestingly, as we had an indoor team and an outdoor team, there were players that actually played on both the indoor team and the outdoor team. So it's definitely interesting to think that they played on both teams, coached by the same coach. And uh, also another thing that's very interesting, as the Calgary Boomers franchise, and actually... I love the logo of the other team from the Memphis, as this team franchise history started off in Memphis, Tennessee. They were called the Memphis Rogues, and obviously, if you know me, you can find why well, I love that logo and thinking why well, we couldn't uh, maybe put some Rocky Mountains in a Calgary Tower in that logo and reuse that. But uh, that team was in Memphis from 1978 to 1980, both played indoor and outdoor. And then got relocated to Calgary by Nelson Scalvania. That name might also sound familiar, as Nelson Scalvania was also the same person that was responsible for bringing the Calgary Flames here, as he bought the Atlanta Flames and moved them to Calgary. He also bought the Memphis Rogues and moved them from Memphis to Calgary as well. Now, Nelson Scalvania definitely was known for a businessman that you know, quickly buys it and flips it. So, uh, so yeah, Nelson Scalvania brought two professional teams to Calgary, although obviously one team is still flourishing and the other is still in history. And as I said, the team folded after 1981 as the Calgary Boomers were towards the end of the whole era of the North American Soccer League because the whole league 
folded in 1984. It felt like that uh, the league kind of expanded too quickly. And I can't find anything about how well the games were attended with the Calgary Boomers, both in the corral with the indoor games and outside at McMahon Stadium. But the whole North American Soccer League, this rendition of it, there was another North American Soccer League that uh, existed from 2011 to 2017, but that's a separate identity. This one was started, established in 1968 and folded after 1984. And the Calgary Boomers were a part of it. So let's uh, take a look at uh, a little bit of the Calgary Boomers. As I said, they were a team in the North American Soccer League, played indoor and outdoor, and moved from Memphis. And uh, they were coached by Al, or the manager was Al Miller, and he coached both the, uh, the indoor and outdoor team. And then the, uh, if we take a look at the roster, I mean, there were some players that uh, played on the both sides at the same time, including like, say, Gerard Zimmerman, for example. But uh, I would say the best uh, player for the Calgary Boomers that uh, played on the outdoor and actually made it to the All-Star Game for 1981 was the name Franz Gerber, who uh, is from Germany. He scored uh, 20 goals in 25 games with 10 assists and 50 points. So he made it to the NASL All-Star Game in 1981 for the outdoor team. He did not play on the uh, indoor team, but he could probably say the best player that the Calgary Boomers had, also played on both the indoor and outdoor team, was young Carlos Molina, a forward. He was six foot in the indoor game. He is from Argentina. He played 17 games. He scored 16 goals, got 31 assists, 63 points. That's the indoor game. You can mind there's more goals in the indoor game. Well, outside, when, and he wore number 10 for both teams. He played 29 games. He scored 5 goals, 4 assists for 14 points for the outdoor game. So uh, I would say those are probably the couple hot shots. I haven't heard anything or we don't haven't heard anything from Calgary sports fans that, uh, you know, rave about this soccer player from the past. But uh, as you also know, this could possibly say this North American Soccer League they tried to be a little different, where, uh, I mean, North America, you could say, in general, has a, not is interested in soccer compared to other parts in the world. But definitely when this league came in, and I know it also provided bigger audience and more eyes to the product, before the Calgary Boomers was in 1975, Pele, the Brazilian legend, actually played in this league for the New York Cosmos, so I saw that as well. That was when the league was rapidly expanding, but the Calgary got to the last end before things were contracting. So if we look at uh, how the Calgary Boomers did indoors and outdoors, just the only season they existed, well, in the 1980-81 season for indoors, they were 10-8. and eight. They finished third in the Northern Division. It did not make the playoffs. So if I bring up the uh, season for that, well, actually, ultimately, there was a team called the Edmonton Drillers that won the championship for the indoor season for 1980-81. And uh, they said the Premiers were the Chicago Sting. So the Calgary Drillers, they were in the Northern Division. They were also in the division with the Vancouver Whitecaps and actually some teams that were in the North American Soccer League were, have maintained the same nickname for the uh, Major League Soccer, MLS, we could say, is the, is the current, you know, highest level soccer in North America right now that Calgary isn't a part of. I mean, Calgary right now, you could maybe say some of these soccer teams in the past, and they'll talk more in the series. We have the Calgary FC, which they play down in Spruce Meadows. That's the Canadian Premier League, which is kind of level below. So Calgary... So it was only in their second season. But you could say some of these teams definitely, or something that I'll talk about later in the series, might have planned a seat for hopefully Calvary to do better. But yeah, Vancouver, Whitecaps, and then there was the Edmonton Drillers. So the top two teams in that division made the playoffs. And then there was the Toronto Blizzard. And actually, Calvary just missed the, uh, they must have lost to the Edmonton Drillers because they were tied with the uh, them in the standings, but made the playoffs. Other teams that were in this, league 
was if in the Eastern Vision there was the Atlanta Chiefs. Maybe that's where it inspired the uh, name for the Braves. And then there was the Tampa Bay Rowdies. <laughs> that's a funny name. How about this? The Jacksonville team in. I believe that team actually relocated from uh, New England. And they kept that name. And I saw that. And then there was the Fort Lauderdale Strikers. So that was in the East Division. And then there was the Central Division. Well, I guess the Premiers went. They had the best record in the league. You had the Chicago Sting. And then there was the Minnesota Kicks. And the Detroit Express. So that was the Central Division in the in the in the SL. And then in the Southern Division, there was a team called the California Surf. Yeah. And then there was the Tulsa Roughnecks. Hey, Roughnecks. Tulsa, Oklahoma. And then there was the Dallas Tornado. Mm -hmm. And then the San Diego Soccers. <laughs> and I already mentioned the Northern Division where the Calgary Driller, or the Calgary Rumors are in. We actually had a team called the Drillers when it came to basketball a couple episodes ago. And then in the last division, here was the Western Division. You had the Los Angeles Aztecs. And then there was the Portland Timbers. And then there was the San Jose Earthquakes. And then Seattle Sounders. That name might sound familiar, as I believe the Seattle Sounders in the MLS used that name. So, yeah. Those were all the teams that uh, were in this league at that time. And then there was no playoffs because the Calgary Boomers did not make the playoffs when it comes to the only indoor season. I already had a little more luck in the outdoor season, the outdoor season, where they at least made the playoffs, as they had a 15, 17 and 15 record, as they played 32 games, but they lost in the first round. They finished second in the Northwest Division, but they lost to Fort Lauderdale in the first round in the playoffs in the 1981 season. Ultimately, it was the Chicago Sting that won the championship for 1981 in the NASL. The Premiers, I guess it was the New York Cosmos, the team that I mentioned that Pele eventually played on back in 1975, won the league title. And uh, and I say the top school score there was Gorgino Chingala, had 29 goals, and then I'm not too sure about attendance, how well it was attended with Calgary Boomer games. But they said the average attendance for the 1981 season was 14,084. So that was the... Uh, Average attendance. So if you take a look at the regular season, well, there was the, some teams that played in both indoor and outdoor. Well, the Northwest Division, where the Calgary Boomers were in, actually four of the five teams made the playoffs. Well, Vancouver Whitecaps were in first place that year, and then the Calgary Boomers were second, and then you had the Portland Timbers and the Seattle Sanders third and fourth. And actually, the Edmonton Drillers, they won the indoor championship, but they didn't translate that to outdoors. They were last in Missed the playoffs. And actually a lot of these teams played both indoor and outdoor. So in the Eastern Division where the New York Cosmos is, that won the best record in the league. They were 23-9 and nine that season. Then you had the Montreal Maniac who were made the playoffs. And then the uh, teams that missed were the, was the Washington Diplomats. And then there was the Toronto Blizzard. And then the Southern Division, everybody made the playoffs. I think it was 1-16. through 16. That's why, they, why you got some divisions with... Multiple teams made the playoffs, and others not. So in the Southern Division, you had the Atlanta Chiefs. Then it was the Fort Lauderdale Strikers, where ultimately Calgary lost two straight, the best of three. And then there was the Jacksonville team in, and then the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Then in the Central Division, you had the Chicago Sting, the Minnesota Kicks, Tulsa Roughnecks, and then the Dallas Tornado, who missed the playoffs. And then the Western Division, you had the two top two teams made the playoffs, and the San Diego Soccers and the Los Angeles Aztecs, and while the California Surf and San Diego Earthquakes missed the playoffs, and there I mentioned the uh, Northwest Division, so at least we got playoffs in the outdoor, but we were swept in two games from Port Lauderdale, so damn, another parallel where Calgary loses to a Florida-based team, however, this case was only in the first round 16 years ago, as you know. Gary Flames, we lost to another Florida-based team that uh, mattered a little more. And I mentioned also the only all-star that was Calgary was uh, Franz Gerber, who from Germany was a forward that was the only Calgary boomer that made it to the all-star game. That Giorgino Cheniella, if I say his name right, played for the New York Cosmos, so that's probably a big reason why they won the uh, league title. 
So that's all I have for uh, the Boomers on their seasons, as they only played one season. They had their indoor season where they just missed the playoffs, and their only outdoor season where they uh, made the playoffs but lost in the lost in the first round to the Fort Lauderdale Strikers. And then what made the uh, North American Soccer League unique was that uh, it kind of still brought in elements of uh, for professional football as a lot of these teams also played in their, you know, football stadiums. Let's say, for example, you know, Calgary Boomers played at the McMahon Stadium. But I know that they had, like, cheerleaders. And I did sign one picture in the uh, Fun Well Lasted website where I'll share some pictures from from there to share in this video. Some Calgary Boomers in action. I feel it's important that, uh, I mean, obviously I put all the links in the description where I get some of these relics in the past, but it's worth, uh, you know, still sharing it to uh, still preserve years to come down the road depending on how long YouTube is on the internet. But uh, they, instead of counting up, they counted down for the clock. And they just added, like, other elements, like, uh, instead of, you know, penalty kicks, they kind of used that hockey shootout where uh, the ball is at the 35-yard line and then you kind of approach in, like a shootout in hockey. Where instead, I think it's 18 yards for the box around the net and then it's basically you kick. <coughs> Excuse me, where the goalie is like, hey, is he going to go this way or that way? And that's, uh, I mean, I definitely don't like how penalty kicks decide games. I mean, it's like, you know, for example, let's say if the Stanley Cup Finals, you know, after they play one period of overtime, then go to a shootout to decide the, you know, Stanley Cup, or let's say, you know, the Great Cup or the Super Bowl, maybe they play one quarter of, you know, football, and if it's still tied, then we'll have a field goal kick rally, or, or baseball, if the World Series, you know, if the game's tied after a few innings, then they have a home run there, that's, that's still how I feel about soccer, but they... At least try to implement that, the kind of a penalty shootout concept for, uh, you know, for instead of penalty kicks and then have cheerleaders. So that's uh, kind of one of the, uh, let's say, interesting, unique things that I found from the North American Soccer League. I mean, keep in mind that uh, this predates me, but uh, that's what I find, and I know that's definitely interesting. Now, you don't really see cheerleaders in the traditional form at... Uh, you know, soccer games right now. I don't know much about uh, MLS when it comes to what they do to pro games, but I, I mean, I, I'm very, I'm barely lukewarm when it comes to being a soccer fan myself. But, uh, but it sounds like it would have been an interesting time to watch soccer. But I would say because of this league, even though it expanded too quickly and teams were in financial trouble, including the Calgary Boomers, where they lost two million dollars. And that's why they folded. And I mean, this league, it definitely boosted the pro boosted the profile for uh, maybe getting more soccer in the U.S. and Canada. Because as you recall, the only time that Canada made it to the FIFA World Cup was in 1986. You could probably say pins off of uh, this league getting more profile. And then the Ca Canada just missed the uh, FIFA World Cup in 1982. And then obviously the U.S. I would say I would say the U.S. has played a little better internationally when it comes to uh, the men's obviously on the women's side. Well, Canada and the U.S. are much stronger when it comes to soccer. But you could probably say at that time, and then there was more of a soccer boom in the 1970s in that culture. That uh, why there was a you know North American Soccer League, and you can still say some of that legacy still exists, but it's not as big. But uh, the league's a lot more stable in the MLS to Major League Soccer. Where I believe that there's only, for example, there there's only three Canadian teams. I know you got the Vancouver Whitecaps, then there was the Toronto FC, and then I believe in Montreal they're called the Impact. And then, I mean Calgary is in a soccer league, the Canadian Premier Soccer League, as Calgary FC. So I mean there is still some soccer, but I mean Calgary plays at Spruce Meadows. And then as we look later in the series, where we talk about other soccer teams in the past. I mean, we started off at McMahon Stadium, which is the big, one of the bigger, it actually is one of the bigger stadiums in Canada. But then eventually, you know, we had soccer teams that played in Moata, and then eventually, you know, just at Glenmore, or Foothills Athletic Park, and then even in the Subway Soccer Center. So, 
that tells you that soccer isn't as big in Canada, especially in Calgary, as we've had a few soccer teams. But uh, you know, at the at the peak when it comes to uh, when it comes to the and the North American Soccer League. There was over 24 teams in the league at one time and got big deals where they were on CBS Sports as well and ABC in the U.S. So uh, it, it was out there during the United Savvies and having Pele playing for uh, the New York Cosmos, which is one of the best uh, soccer players of all time. I know that later in their careers, I remember that uh, if you go back to Major League Soccer, well, Los Angeles Galaxy, I know they had David Beckham, and then Terry Henry played for the New York Red Bulls, so uh, that's what I would say you could pin the Major League Soccer to the start of this, but uh, in terms of uh, soccer in Calgary, I'm going to say it's even tougher than basketballs, where I talked about basketball teams in the past, but uh, we had a few soccer teams, but that's all I can really cover, just based my personal opinion on the North American Soccer League, what I could find, obviously I'll find the relics that I'll share from several websites that I'll have a link in the description, but the Boomers only list lasted for one year. They had an indoor team and an outdoor team. More interesting history to think that the Stampede Corral, which uh, now is being demolished for the uh, BMO Center expansion, that even the Stampede Corral had some soccer. And McMahon Stadium, which is where primarily the Calgary Stampeders play, they also hosted some soccer, and you could probably say this probably is the biggest uh, soccer team that Calgary had because it was in the high-profile league because the other leagues so sure with the other soccer teams wasn't as high-profile, and then Calgary's not in the MLS, but at least we're in the you know the newly formed Canadian Premier League where Calgary is. So, uh, so yeah, what do you think of the Calgary Boomers? I mean, I didn't find... Too, too much on it. I don't, I don't know how well attended the games were or what games were like. I couldn't even find any videos. I mean, you could search on here and there's videos of games in the past, but that was before uh, we got to the 1980s. I was in the mid-70s, and obviously I did find uh, a clip of uh, Pele, you know, being in, introduced to the New York Cosmos crowd in 1975 and all the excitement to bring more profile to the league, but uh, I couldn't find any video or just find some pictures of the Calgary Boomers, what the jerseys looked like. But uh, that's all I have. I mean, do you remember anything? Or what do you thought it would have been like to watch the Calgary Boomers in the North American Soccer League? And then speaking of soccer leagues as well, you can uh, think the next episode that I plan to talk about for episode 11, I am going to uh, talk about more soccer teams as Calgary had the strikers and kickers. So that would be the next episode that I'll talk about in my Remember the Calgary series. Might as well take a look at soccer teams now that uh, when I was mapping out the episodes, I mean most of the teams that I'm going to eventually talk about is hockey teams and yes I will eventually get to uh, talking about the biggest team that I think Calgary missed but uh, it will be much later in the series. You can see my introduction video and in the description of all the teams that I've already talked about and plan to talk about. So you can see that video. And also, I did forget to start the episode, too. If you wanted to look at my last episode, I talked about the Calgary Wranglers. So I'll, I'll have that playlist right there as well for all the episodes that I've made already and future episodes that I'll make about my Remember the Calgary series. So anyway... If you want to follow along with this Calgary sports fan's journey, home of the Flames, Hitman, Roughnecks, and Stampeders, and formerly home of the Calgary Boomers, I mostly talk Calgary sports on my channel, well, mostly with current teams, but uh, in this series I'll talk about Calgary sports teams from the past. And, but I also do have personal vlogs, attempt to call me, and I also do share my experience them on the road or at a sport event, so if it all sounds like it'd be interesting to watch, do follow along with this Calgary sports fan's journey. You know what you need to do, just uh, make sure you hit like, subscribe. I also have my other social media links down in the description below. For other ways, you can follow me and maybe get any updates or any what I plan to do on my channel. Or, for example, in this series, when I share a logo about a team from the past that I plan to talk about, which, for example, next episode, I'll plan to talk about the strikers and kickers. Yeah, I'm going to say those are also 
original names for a soccer team. There were definitely some silly ones that I found talking about the North American Soccer League when the Boomers were a part of it. I'm going to say the name probably was inspired from the oil boom that happened in the 1970s, but uh, that stopped in the early 1980s in Calgary. But I definitely love that logo that the, that the Memphis Rogues used. I, I think we should have used that, but put in some Calgary flavor, let's say the Calgary Tower and the Rocky Mountains in the background, and maybe put a maple leaf on it. I don't know. That's just me, but uh, and also those jerseys that the, the Memphis Rogues wore actually had some red in it. Obviously, that's Calgary's colors. So, as I say, I'll see you in the next video or next episode, whatever you like to watch on my YouTube channel. So, I'll see you then. Enjoy some relics or some Calgary boomers. So, thank you.